morning friends welcome you all to global mep training academy in this video we are going to see the sizing of jackie pump used in firefighting and some key points related to the accessories of jackie pump let's start the video so design five for the jackie pump uh, fire pump size first of all fire pumps so fire pump sizing it is calculated from the hydraulic calculation based on spinglers, standpipes, or external fire hydrants, and uh, if there is some special system like a deluge system, uh, so that calculation is different. So in the in the future videos, we will explain very detail about the fire pumps calculation. Uh, so now here we are going to see the Jackie pump sizing. So in the Jackie pump, as you know that is a pressure maintenance pump. If there is any small leakage, uh, the normal drops in the in the line so of course we need a pump to uh, make the uh, compensation for the water so that's the reason we use the jackie pump is called as a pressure maintenance pumps okay so here so here uh, there are two conditions the first condition is jackie pump the, the pump room is serving only for the high risk buildings okay so that means there is full of above ground pipelines and the second case uh, sometime you see that um, the fire pump room is located in the central yard and from there that pump is serving to different buildings so there will be a um, there is there will be a lengthy underground line okay so that we'll discuss in the case two so first thing is the case one so how to size the jackie pump which is serving to the high risk building for example just assume that if there is if there is a small fire and the water is coming out from uh, like one or two spinglers okay so in this case if we design the jackie pump with a very high capacity i mean the flow very higher flow it will only run instead of activating the fire pumps okay that means the jackie pump keep jackie pump keep on running keeps on running and the fire pump will never get started if the flow of the jackie pump is very high okay so that is the reason we should consider uh, like as i mentioned here the jackie pump should be sized to provide a flow less than a spingler flow okay so what will happen if one spingler breaks the jackie pump will start supplying the water okay and the fire continues and if there is an activation of second spingler of course the jackie pump cannot match the water demand so that time surely the second pump like our fire pumps will start running okay based on the based on the pressure setting so we will see how the pressure setting is done in the coming slides okay so that is the reason we have to design the jackie pump to activate here based on the single spindle flow so now let's see how to decide that one for example we know the formula q is equal to k into uh, root of p the k is the the k factor of spindler so there are different k factors we have uh, 5.6 8 11.2 22 uh, the the selection of k factor um, from nfa 13 uh, is based on the hazard like commodity there be different spindler and height requirement this is a different topic we can discuss in detail so for time making we can consider q is equal to k into root of p so the p is the um, pressure value of the spindler so if you go to NFA 13, table 27.2.4.11, the minimum operating pressure of any spindler shall be 7 psi. Okay, so I'm I'm going to consider the minimum pressure value here to find out the flow requirement. So here Q is equal to K. I consider a K 5.6 spindler uh, for this example and into the root of P. The P is the minimum pressure that is the 7 psi. Okay, so uh, 7 uh, root of 7 into 5.6 i get the flow of 14.82 gpm okay so if there is a activation of one spindler if they are if one spindler is broken we will get a flow of 14.82 uh, gpm okay so in this case if i size a uh, jackie pump for 40 gpm for example so that means what will happen if one spindler breaks the jackie pump will run if two spindler three spindler breaks still the jackie pump will keep on running so the fire pump activation is a doubt okay. so that is the reason we have to follow this requirement okay and the fear requirement like uh, it has be the flow should be less than one spindler okay so the next case we can see the fire pumps is located in the central yard and it is supplying to the uh, different buildings through the underground pipelines for nfa so like as i mentioned here nfa 24 permits 
the underground main to have some leakage one one guideline that has been successfully used to precise pressure maintain published to select the pump that will make the allowance for example 10 minutes or 1 gpm alone which is larger so normally a rule of thumb we follow for the designing the jackie pump that is a one percentage of fire pump capacity for example we have a fire pump with 1500 gpm so one percentage of 1500 is 15 gpm so we can size the pump considering the one percentage thumb rule rules okay so how about the jackie pump head now we know the flow so to decide the jackie pump head pressure of jackie pump shall be greater than the pressure of main fire pump by 10 psi that means if a fire pump has the pressure of 160 psi the jackie pump will be designed for 170 psi 10 psi higher so some of the points you can add here regarding the jackie pump so jackie pump is prepared to be a centrifugal type pumps okay so there are different pumps we have uh, so jackie pump should be centrifugal type pumps jackie pump shall be approved but shall not be required to be listed so uh, you know that uh, we have you have seen the ul f from listed uh, category in the firefighting materials so there is no requirement that uh, jackie pump has to be listed okay so that is the important thing and the controller for a jackie pump shall be listed but shall not be required to be listed for fire pump service okay if you go to ul uh, ul 448 yeah, normally ul 448 we are following for the uh, firefighting the stationary pumps uh, n section uh, and um, this um, split case pumps so as per the we can list in the ul but there is no specific there is no specific requirement that the fire pump uh, this pump is located to be listed as fire pump okay so that is the important thing the jackie pump shall not be required to have alternate or standby power Okay, for the fire pumps, yes, we should have the standby powers, but jackie pump, there is no requirement. And isolation valves shall be installed on the suction side of the jackie pump to isolate the pump. But the another requirement is some valve uh, serving the jackie pump shall not be required to be supervised. Okay, there is no need to have the OS and Y gate wall like what we have for the fire pump. We don't need to have that type of wall in the jackie pump. We just uh, we can install simply the isolation walls. Okay. The check wall and isolation wall shall be installed in the discharge side of the jackie pump. Okay. Again, this isolation wall, there is no requirement of OS and Y are super rest. There is no need to have that one. Walls and components for the jackie pump shall not be required to be listed. Again, the check wall and the other accessories for the jackie pump line, there is no requirement of listed. Okay. So, jackie pump shall have its own individual pressure sensing lines, 15 hour nominal size between check and isolation wall okay so we should have a pressure sensing line connected with the pressure switch and controller to activate the pumps so, okay so it should be with the minimum 15 mm pressure lines uh, pressure sensing line thank you for watching the video please like comment and subscribe for more videos thank you